actually work. Thank you very much. Um, uh, this is a joint work with uh, Laura Tarantino, Tania Di Mascio, and Maria Chiara Tino, all of us coming from the University of Latina in Italy, uh, two departments. Uh, our three authors are coming from uh, Information Engineering and Computer Science, and Maria Chiara from uh, Applied Chemical Science and Biotechnology. She's a psychologist expert in psychometry. Um, Okay, so uh, we had the opportunity, uh, thanks to Maria Chiara, to have uh, to experiment uh, virtual reality application with the uh, autism uh, um, young adults. Uh, the main experts generally agree on the potential of uh, VR-based uh, treatment aimed at improving emotional competencies and social skills in individuals with autism, autism spectrum disorder. This is a, a treatment, it's not a cure, as you may know, um, the autism also has a spectrum of a wide range of uh, syndrome and from a low level to a high level and so but um, since it's a question of communication and social skills um, virtual reality may actually help a lot um, because it's basically a um, controlled environment and it's predictable from their point of view. Uh, our aims in this work is to evaluate uh, two headsets, a differing degree of which the physical world is cut out from the view of the Swift and all lenses, to, start, uh, uh, to study their general appropriateness uh, with respect to the possible VR-based uh, ASDP dot treatment. So we would like to reason about, uh, about the interpretation of uh, selected measured engagement aspects in the case of typically developing people, which are uh, basically people that don't have autism, and ASD people. And then we want to outline the nature of the based the possible ASD-oriented application based on these two headsets, based on our experience. So <laughs> I'm going to describe a four kind of, uh, four different app single application, which are instances of, a, we can consider a class of uh, application. Um, the, the first two are available from the Oculus uh, uh, startup uh, mm, uh, uh, library, uh, Introduction to Virtual Reality. It's a, it's a video, basically a 360 video, um, where with uh, animals and uh, scenes uh, uh, projected in uh, exotic places. The DreamTech uh, Oculus demo is more like a mix of uh, photorealistic and non photorealistic scenarios. We want to see how this uh, parameter impacts on the um, use, usability of those applications. And uh, most important is the uh, E3, which is our own uh, 3D virtual reality model of a church that we developed in a previous work, a uh, uh, church that had been destroyed by a heart earthquake 10 years ago in our city, which was pretty bad. And uh, the fourth application is a, a Michelangelo David statue which can be observed in uh, AR and mixed reality with uh, all lenses and can be interacted with the, um, uh, taking away the, the stones and until it's, uh, the full statue is revealed. So these are just screenshots of the four different kind of uh, applications. Um, uh, here, most important is to uh, understand the impact of the 360 video where there is no position tracking uh, instead, uh, in these other three experiments, position tracking is present. And here it's interesting to know how cartoonist uh, kind of environment uh, can impact uh, usability for uh, ASD users. And this is our own uh, reconstruction that I would like to show you more in details with the video. And this is uh, the Michelangelo coming from the um, Microsoft library uh, of the OLENSYS. Uh, for for uh, this uh, our church reconstruction, I have a, a small video to show you. This is uh, how was the church before the earthquake. Um, it was uh, a historical church of uh, L'Aquila, where the city was founded in the 12th century. 
uh, around. Uh, it was uh, quite beautiful. A lot of family been uh, uh, growing up here. Um, there is an emotional link with all of the inhabitants of the city. Uh, then uh, 2009 was a pretty bad uh, earthquake, and uh, all the roof is colla has collapsed. And now it's only uh, it's in this state uh, since 10 years. Uh, this material is experimental, just to it's light but strong to take all the ruins together in waiting to decide what to do with it. And so uh, as an, an university, we felt our own uh, um, uh, duty to uh, try to make uh, uh, a virtual reality reconstruction uh, for, for the citizenship uh, as at large. And then we use this model in this experiment. Um, this is, was done in Unity and uh, modeled it uh, with uh, uh, many kinds of uh, tools, um, texture mapping, texture uh, UV mapping, and uh, uh, photogrammetry of some objects inside the church. Uh, in particular, this one is a baptism fountain, uh, which has been uh, reconstructed. This is the only, the only piece left out of the earthquake. Uh, so we wanted to have a digital uh, copy of it, and uh, all the paintings uh, uh, been taken away by the firefighters after the earthquakes. So we only took them from the picture of the parish, and uh, all the pictures we basically reconstructed philologically the church, uh, starting from pictures and uh, historical documents. Mm -hmm. There were no scanning, no laser scanning available. Okay, so this is our previous work done with the archaeologist, the professor, um, Dr. Alessio Cordisco. And this is a, the external a kind of a, a virtual square of the uh, city where the church has been located uh, to have, a, to have a, a context. So we use this uh, to let them, uh, first of all, uh, remember what because the, this, uh, these young guys are all coming from uh, the city. Uh, um, they are aged, all males aged between 21 and 23, diagnosed with different level of autism spectrum. Uh, and uh, we, uh, they uh, didn't have any virtual reality experience before the experiment, uh, other than probably some game uh, on, a beat, on, a, on a projector on the screen, uh, but not, uh, definitely not has a headset usage. This is more detailed uh, psychometric characterization of the users. Uh, these parameters can easily be found on the reference our paper. These parameters are very objective uh, and uh, can take into account their capability to um, uh, recognize uh, um, facial expression, uh, uh, IQ, intelligent, uh, le intelligence level, uh, uh, psychology, uh, reactivity on any kind of uh, stimulation. So all of those have been uh, uh, related to the literature. And then uh, we defined uh, two sets of engagement factors. Uh, one uh, that's supposed to be quantitative, uh, like uh, those two here, uh, this, this uh, for, uh, for set here, the emotional participation, the suspicion of disbelief, uh, body participation, <coughs> exploration and action. They look pretty qualitative, but they, it's possible to measure with some psychometric techniques. Indeed, the more qualitative engagement factor are the ones in the below, that like facial expression, level of attention, emotional participation, and verbal reaction. All of those have been described in the paper, so you're welcome to have a look to that. And uh, then we uh, mapped all of those um, first set metric in uh, different uh, uh, virtual reality experiments uh, where, where possible. For example, only the, the second one, uh, which is the one the cartoonist environment, it can, only, it can only be measured with the non-photorealistic uh, emotional participation and so on. Or, for example, only the third and fourth uh, can be explored in terms of exploration and action, which means that you, can, you have a position tracking so you can move around uh, and, um, and explore the environment. Um, also, we defined some activities, uh, trying to make uh, quantitative measurements, a uh, capability to mount the edge set uh, by themselves, 
dismounting, uh, browsing menus uh, with different techniques uh, in uh, Oculus Rift or in other lenses with gestures. So um, how, how long it takes to learn gestures from with the mix of reality headset um, then uh, just watching uh, uh, virtual reality in, in, in a passive mode or exploring a virtual environment or playing uh, uh, actively uh, in the virtual environment. We then uh, uh, distributed the metric uh, uh, associating the, uh, over the uh, headset where it's possible activities and uh, emotional engagement factors uh, were applicable as described in the paper. And these are the first set of the results. Um, this is the average over these uh, six uh, subjects, um, taking, uh, comparing uh, the Oculus Rift and Oculus Lenses. Uh, Oculus Lenses misses one column, which is about the, um, uh, the uh, non-photorealistic experiences, because uh, it cannot be fully uh, immersed uh, because there is a transparency. And then uh, you can see here that the, there are quite differences, for example, in the body participation and uh, in uh, 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 the special uh, uh, disbelief. Uh, um, this is the single single subjects uh, measurement taken out. It's, it's, a, it's a very low number. It's difficult to have these uh, subjects uh, participating into uh, an experiment. So we, we did, did not any statistics, just put the numbers uh, how they were for each subject. Uh, we hope to do a larger experiment in the future. Uh, so uh, in terms of qualitative results, uh, um, we say that actually they found very satisfied the facial expression, first of all, um, focus and tension while in the virtual environment. So they focused their attention very much on what they were looking at. Um, emotional participation throughout the experience with the eagerness to start the experiment and the excitement during and after the experiment. Uh, verbal participation with a lot of comments, even on technical aspects. Some of those uh, are computer science students, which uh, on their pace, uh, they try to also study um, computer science. Um, so overall, uh, qualitatively, we, we, we found that engagement was very high. On the other hand, uh, look at those numbers. Uh, this is uh, pretty much uh, on the average of engagement. If you take into consideration the literature statistics on um, um, so-called the TV people with that's like us. Um, so uh, the uh, second set of results appear to be a slightly contrast with figure related to the first set. Uh, that seems to suggest a medium degree of engagement. This leads to some reflection about the interpretation we have to give the score of the first set's metrics in case of outmoving subjects. Is the higher value still the better? We're not sure about that because maybe uh, the literature is still incomplete and uh, more research needs to be done. Um, in terms of uh, body participation and exploration, uh, the different score of the two H HMD suggests that uh, the cable connecting the Oculus Rift headset to the computer may have had an impeding role, and definitely we're going to test more interesting devices uh, while free in the future. And the talking about photorealism, um, uh, this just suggests that this plays a critical role in the achievement of engagement in the case of, uh, let's say, normal people, um, but did not perform better than non photorealism in the case of. Uh, uh, yes, the, the people. Uh, they, they get easily distracted by irrelevant details uh, of a complex scene and feel more comfortable when facing a simplified reality, which is, this is actually maybe a, a good uh, way to go because uh, they feel more comfortable in a controlled environment. So they are, they are less overwhelmed. <coughs> and actually, uh, the, the problem of communication with the uh, autism uh, people is that they uh, um, they are so overwhelmed by the real world they ca they don't have uh, like a time or a bandwidth to communicate with the human being. Probably doing that through virtual reality could 
could be in Colombia a better situation because they, uh, there is a lower bandwidth of information going coming to their senses. Um, okay, uh, personalization. We found very important to be the personalization because uh, they wanted to have uh, each one a special special experience. We're going to conclude. Um, uh, in terms of you know, suspension of disbelief, our study underlined a continuous awareness of the distinction between real and the virtual world through the duration of session. They were actually they were talking while playing, and they were well aware what is the reality, what is the virtual reality. So it's a completely different metric of what we usually do with the TV people. Um, and then uh, the overlenses uh, appear to be more adaptive, uh, more uh, more appropriate for for uh, or any future advanced uh, augmented reality or mixed reality glasses, uh, you know, for application, for educational application or communication application for ASD person. Uh, so, uh, in, t in conclusion, uh, um, well, we need to change our perspective probably. Uh, we need to go back to the blackboard and study about the usability studies that are applicable to this class of users and to, to understand what would be more appropriate uh, development for games or for the educational application or, or for treatment application. So we want to do more uh, uh, VR and uh, mixed reality wide-free devices for the future and uh, introduce uh, as avatar assistance in the games uh, whenever it's possible. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Stefani. Very interesting project. So our last talk in this session is titled, Don't Panic, Recursive Interactions in a Miniature